Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to do the first part of the Creality CP01. This is a 3-in-1 that has a 3D printing head, an engraving head, laser, and also a CNC head. So this ought to be fun. So sitting on top in the, as usual, well-packed looking box, we have our goodie box, our instruction manual, and 200 grams of filament. I'm glad to see them including that. Alrighty, some stuff in the goodie box. I am very, very pleased to see that you actually get two pair of goggles with this. These are safety goggles, so when you're using the CNC, which is going to shoot things out from the machine, when you're carving stuff, you have safety goggles, and you have the appropriate frequency laser goggles to protect you from the laser engraving. Do be careful when using this machine around anybody else, because anybody walking in the room, if that laser light reflects off something, it will be strong enough to damage their eyes. So I have several pairs of these, and so what I do is I have a hook on the wall right there. And so my sister knows if she sees the goggles on the wall, she has to put them on before she comes in here. No goggles and she's fine. But if she sees goggles hanging up, then she knows she has to come in here. So I keep a pair of these hanging up at the corner there before she can walk into this part of the house. So she knows if she comes in here, put them on. Because nothing to play with. It can mess you up quick. So we have our 3D printing tools, so our wrenches, our Allen key, screwdrivers, zip ties, and our nips, and our, um, what do you call that, acupuncture needle. This is the three-in-one. I'm guessing that these are hold-down clamps for the CNC. That's what I want to guess these are, so to hold down whatever piece you're working on. Uh, this also has a full-size SD card, which is nice. That's an eight gigabyte card. There's a bunch of our nuts and bolts, spool holder, and um, spatula for the 3D printing side of things. Um, a bunch more tools for or, um, parts for assembly. I see knobs and wrenches and bolts. And then in here we have more bolts and that looks like the head for the CNC. Yes, micrograin carbide end mill. So there's the end mill for working on the CNC portion of things. So now we're gonna get into here and work on things. Okay, here's everything from inside the box. We have the print bed, which is really loose. I'll get to that in a moment. They also give a sample piece of acrylic and wood to play with for engraving. I assume this is for the CNC, so this will be your hold down points to attach those clamps to so you can hold whatever part you're working with. Um, the gantry is ridiculously rigid. As you can see, your part attaches here to this gantry. Everything is 40 by 40 rails, like the lead screws are inside the 40 by 40 rails. Um, super beefy. Here is your 3D printing head. It is direct drive, so it's actually the heaviest component here. Then you have your CNC head, which has your mill head down here. And then you have your laser head, which has your laser beam here. Pew, pew, pew. Um, we will go from there. The tricky part is going to be reattaching this bed. It has to be designed to be removable because I think it comes off to allow you to attach these bits. Unless, actually no, this bit is going to go right in here. This is going to replace the glass. So you'll undo these clips and then the glass comes off and then your CNC module goes into play. Um, so I got to figure out how to reattach those screws. They came out in shipping, they came loose. That's going to be fun. And, and you do get one milling bit inside the toolkit, your goodie box. Where's that? Did I leave it out? Oh, there it is. So you get one milling bit right here. It is a 1.0 by 3 by D454 F, whatever that means, but that's your milling bit that comes with the printer. So it comes with everything to get you started, including apparently the software on the SD card. Uh, Creality Workshop, which apparently does all three. We shall see, so stay tuned. We decided to explore the base. I took it apart because it's going to make it easier for me to reattach these screws that came loose. Matter of fact, let me disconnect this all together so you guys can see what this looks like. It should only take a moment because there's only one screw left. Here we go. 
So as you can see, you have this plate here, and you have this plate here, which I can't move because it's attached. All right. So these mounting posts right here attached to that plate. As you can see, it's the same as that plate up there. Okay. So they're keeping their parts consistent. Well, these four bolts came loose in shipping. So I've got to put them back together. And it's a lot easier once you take this apart. So the four in the back right here and the one alone plus two up here is all you need to do. And you can pop this apart. Very easy to put these back on then. All right, bed is fixed. I just put the four bolts back in and we are good to go. They do appear that they might be hardened. So that is good quality screws right there. I'm thinking about putting a little electrical wire around the edge of my laptop, so a little tiny current, so when you step on it, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I just scared the cat. <laughs> oh, you like that foam box, huh? I might keep that for you. <laughs> oh, my cat's jumpy. The, no, he doesn't care, but Ender, oh, he is scarable. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm not going to do it for you guys, because I know if I do it too many times, they're going to get used to it. But I have one of those woot monkeys, you know, the screaming woot monkeys. And so I fixed the base of the printer. It was easier for me to take this off. You might be able to do it without taking it off, but for me it was easier. Plus, gave us a chance to take it apart. Um, so that's all fixed now. Bed is now attached solid. And now we're going to put the base back on. But let me show you what's inside first. So you have a genuine LRS 350 24 Meanwell power supply, which is excellent. Which also means this fan is probably going to be noisy, but it is a 60 by 10 millimeter fan, so you can replace that, and it is 12 volts. It's a 24 volt power supply, but it's a 12 volt fan. So easy to replace that fan with something quieter. Any fans in here? Yep, we got a blower in here. Lately, their blowers have been pretty quiet, so hopefully this one will be quiet. Um, the board here is a Creality 3D version 2.5.2 board. So that is their new board in here. Uh, Full-size SD card slot, so I'm guessing this might be the same board as in the CR10 V2. Maybe, because that uses a full-size SD card and a color screen as well, so they might actually share electronics. And that's it. We'll go from there. There's a couple extra ports here that don't appear to be used. So it looks like they have expandability in mind for the future, so that'll be interesting. And I do not know if this has quiet drivers. Like, is this a quiet board or not? We're going to find out when we plug it in. But that's it. You're inside here. They also did ground the frame. So the frame is connected to ground. That's excellent. So it looks like they are learning and improving as they go. This seems pretty darn good. So next step, I'm going to put it back together. Alrighty. Here is your Creality board. This is a Creality 3D V 2.52 board. There's a lot of extra connections here, unused. So it looks like they have some expandability in mind here. That's pretty cool. It is a genuine Meanwell LRS-35024 power supply. Excellent to see. This is an auto sensing, so you do not need to switch between 110 and 220. And why would you do that? Stop that. And then this here um, also uses a 12-volt fan. If yours is noisy, you can replace this with a 12-volt 60 by 10 fan. 24-millimeter blower fan to keep everything cool. And your LCD control screen. And this new board uses a full-size SD card slot, which is fantastic. If you do need to pull yours apart for whatever reason, these four bolts here, this one bolt here, and these two bolts here will allow you to separate the base from the Y-axis channel. When you go to put it back together, you're going to see extra holes in here. Put this one in first. If you put that one in first, it aligns the rest of them for you. You're good to go. And this is a grounded frame, which is nice to see them do that. It's nice to see them improving, fixing things. Well, that's something I guess I was wrong about. Maybe it's the larger power supplies like in the CR-10S Pro. I know that one's auto-sensing. Looks like the smaller LRS-35024s are not auto-sensing. There is a voltage switch on the side, so make sure you set that for 115 if you're in the US. The gantry is installed. You've got the four bolts on each side going up through and it's all metal. I mean, there's no plastic in this. <laughs> um, now we're gonna put one of the print heads on if I don't kill it first. So on the back of the print head here, you have these three connections and they line up with these two holes here and this hole here. So you put the print head in place and then you attach these little screws it comes with to attach the print head to the printer. And then you plug it in. So there's a connection here. All the wires go through. Pretty cool. One of the issues that you have, Creality, with this is that you did not listen to the instructions which screws to use where. You kind of have to guess. 
Well, I figured out that the M312s are the ones you need to attach the limit switches to the printer. So that's what you need to use for that M312s. All right, and, and since we're talking about dildos, we gotta take care of the porn, okay? You guys ready? Got the lube ready? Here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You guys like that, don't you? Huh? You like that, don't you? Want a little rough? There, a little rough. <laughs> One thing to be careful with in adjusting your limit switch for your x-axis is that you have a pinch point here. So if I loosen these up, because I want to move them further left to maximize my build volume, it pinches the wire against the metal here. Or does it? Ah, no it doesn't. Never mind. There is a sufficient gap there, so the wire is not actually being pinched. Nice. Playing around with this for a while. The built-in G-code had some issues, but I was starting to get a pretty nice print out of that. That's actually a beautiful filament. This is the Protopasta Cherry Pie. I don't have enough to redo the cat, so we're going to do a Marvin. Um, turns out that the heat break was a little bit too far down. There's a tiny gap between the heat break and the cup that the heat break sits in, which allowed the filament to turn sideways, right above the heat break. So of course it jammed up and it stopped printing. Easy to fix once I took it apart. This is actually a all metal. Now there is, there are, the components are all metal, but there is a small piece of PTFE tube in the hot end. Um, but all of this here is metal. This entire framework here is all metal. And it's a dual drive Bontech gear unit inside there. Nice. So, but on here, I see absolutely no ringing, no ghosting. I'm actually really impressed. Let's make sure we got some filament flow. Yes, we do. That is way too high. Looks like good enough though. We'll bring this up a little bit. There we go. Marvin's a printing. Quiet stepper drivers, Bontech dual drive, all metal except for PCFE lining in the hot end, silicone sock. It, this is this is nice. Uh, I'm impressed. So more to come as I make sample prints, and of course, in a few weeks, we're going to play with the CNC and the laser module and see what those can do. So stay tuned.